everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I hope you're okay. Thanks for stopping by to spend a little bit of your time with me. I always appreciate it. And I must say a big thank you to anybody who left such a lovely comment after last week's podcast when I was chatting a bit about oh, feeling anxious about going out into the world. <laughs> You know, this kind of anxiety that lots of us have, have got after all those months and months of being in our cosy little homes and not having anything to do with the world out there. Yeah, so thank you. It was really, really lovely to read those comments and and feel that I wasn't alone. And, and if you're feeling the same, you know that you're not alone either. So thank you for that. Uh, today I really really am going to make this quite a short podcast. I, I've promised that to myself that I don't have to make them very long and then you know I don't know I keep piling things in. <laughs> so we still have got uh, a bit of variety today though so I'm going to chat a little bit about Christmas in July and then we're going to go into the kitchen to bake something and we're going to finish off with just uh, a lovely bit of summer relaxation in the garden. <laughs> so that's today. So first of all, Christmas in July. Uh, well, so if, if you watched my previous podcast, you'll know it's something that I only discovered last year. But I think it's been going on for quite a while. And it's really a kind of just a big make along where people share what they're busy making, um, thinking in advance for Christmas, so they're either making gifts or um, actual Christmas decorations or using up uh, yarn that they got in advent calendars. <laughs> so there's all sorts of things go on. And, and the reason that I like make-alongs, make-alongs, sorry, um, is that uh, it's just a way of connecting with other people who like doing the same kind of thing as you. and. So this, so, so on Instagram, there's a hashtag Christmas in July. But actually, I also thought I would join in uh, with Christmas in July uh, um, with uh, Yarn and Yarn's YouTube channel with the lovely Angela there, and uh, so and that's kind of um, being part of a, a slightly smaller community than the the big community of Instagram. So uh, if you're on Instagram, then hopefully you'll see me posting things with that with that hashtag. Yeah, anyway, I mean, there are bad things about make-alongs as well that you can sometimes feel a bit, um, I don't know, maybe a bit restricted by them. But I mean, you don't have to join them. And even if you join one, you don't have to finish it. There's nobody kind of uh, standing over you and saying, oh, you've got to finish this. Because the other make-along that I'm doing at the moment, I know some of you are as well, is, um, is the Year of Gnomes that Sarah Shearer is doing. And that was just deciding to make a gnome for each month of this year and I'm enjoying doing that so I've done the first six months which I've shown you as, as the year's gone by and I mean you know I, I'm not going to give myself a hard time if I don't do any more gnomes um, I just I like making gnomes and it's quite nice to be making one a month but you know it's all for fun isn't it so we mustn't uh, lose sight of that Anyway, Christmas in July, I just, I said that I would share with you what, what I was going to do. And in fact, some of the things that I'm doing at the moment, it, you know, are gifts, going to be gifts for people for Christmas. So I'm kind of doing that. But that really needs to stay behind the scenes and not be something I can share with you because it'll give away secrets to certain people who might be watching. <laughs> so I can't do that. But, but there are other things that uh, I've been wanting to do. And so, uh, so really, there's so there's a couple of things I'll share with you today. I might decide to do some other things as well. But uh, for last Christmas, I made a whole load of uh, crowns, uh, crocheted them, and uh, because I was, you know, trying to do trying to do my little bit to be eco friendly and not buy crackers for example Christmas crackers which have got a lot of you know paper and plastic and things in them and so so I made reusable 
hats, Christmas hats, and they're, they're ready in the, in the box of Christmas things to come out again at Christmas. And I made paper bags to put little gifts in and the hats and jokes and things like that. But I, I did really quite fancy making some Christmas reusable Christmas crackers. And so I, I recently found a lovely pattern on the Knit Picks website. And I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. Um, uh, for, yeah, for some Fair Isle pattern crackers. So that is one of the things that I'm going to be making during July. Uh, well, I mean, I'll make one and then decide if I like them and want to make more. Uh, so yeah, so more about those another time. And uh, and the other thing, I was just browsing through Christmas patterns on Ravelry and just kept coming to a pattern for these little mice. Well, if you know me at all, you know that I do love mice and making mice. And I haven't made one for quite a while, you know, a couple of months, I haven't made a mouse. And I really like the look of these. I haven't made a mouse that's this particular shape and uh, I haven't tried any designs by this particular designer whose name will be on the screen now. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I'm going to make make a couple of these mice, which actually will probably end up as gifts. But so, you know, uh, depends. Oh, I always find it hard to give them away. But uh, yes, I have, I have a couple of very small girls who I think might rather like to have a, a little Christmas mouse each for Christmas. Yeah, so th that's those two projects. And uh, the other thing is uh, I'm going to use the book that I told you that if you watched last week, I bought a book when I was out on my um, being brave train journey to Newcastle. And I've treated myself to this uh, crochet book, which is called Mandalas to Crochet. And after, uh, I mean, I was just drawn to it because af after I made my uh, the mandala uh, for the summer solstice in all the summery colours that I was showing you, uh, I, I thought I'd really like to make some more of these. And I do find them, personally, I do find them useful, uh, you know, to put plant pots on or, uh, you know, just things that are around that could do with something to rest on. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to making some of those. Uh, so you can see there's all sorts of all sorts of different patterns in there um, from the very, very basic to the much more complicated. And the patterns are all written in words and there's also charts for each one. So whichever way you like to do it, I know my mum just loves to work from a chart and, and I'm not so good at doing that in crochet yet. I'm not that experienced in using crochet charts, but I'm going to try because it's really helpful having the chart and the written um, instructions on the same page. So that's that's quite good. I might, might try to do that. Really nice clear pictures of, uh, you know, what it should be looking like. So uh, I can't really go wrong, but I thought I would also um, make one or two perhaps in Christmas colours so that I can have them out at Christmas. And so that is kind of my third thing for Christmas in July. So, yeah, so that's enough about that for the moment. And I will return to that in a, in a week or two when I've hopefully got something to show you. And I think we'll go off into the kitchen now. I'm making a, a tray bake today which uses some of the elderflower cordial that I made recently and I just I just had a look for a recipe that used elderflower cordial and I rather like the sound of this one because it actually also uses raspberries and uh, we have got raspberries growing in our garden as you'll see a little bit later and I still had one box left from last year's raspberries and I really wanted to use them so this recipe uses raspberries and elderflower cordial. So great, and a bit of lemon as well. And uh, except you will see when you watch the video that uh, I might have forgotten to put the raspberries in before I put the thing in the oven. Anyway, it was all fine. It all worked out fine in the end. And actually the, the recipe itself calls for polenta as well as flour. It's not a polenta only cake. It's mostly flour, uh, 
but I found I'd got all the ingredients out and then found that I didn't have polenta so uh, I could have used all flour uh, but I decided to poke about in the cupboard a bit and I found some ground rice so I used that instead of the polenta and it made a really lovely texture to the cake slightly different to using all flour so I can recommend it um, if, you know if you haven't got any polenta and you happen to have some ground rice uh, then yeah makes a it made a good alternative and that was a it was a really really lovely cake I can recommend it okay so off we go to the kitchen So I'm going to finish off today by just taking you out into the garden and giving you the feel of those lovely slow summer days when there's not too much happening. You're not rushing around. You've got time to just sit in the uh, sunshine and uh, just just do something nice and slow. Uh, and I actually uh, wrote the piano music for this uh, because, I don't know, I just had a tune in my head and thought I would try writing it down. But, you know, um, I've talked before about this thing about oh, can you call yourself an artist if you if you draw things and you don't think you're very good? Are you an artist? You know, there's all of those questions. And, you know, I had the same thing going on, on in my head when I was busy composing this bit of music. I was thinking, oh, am I a composer? Should, should I even be doing this? You know, I'm, I'm not a great expert and why why is my brain doing that to me why you know here I am I want to do it I've got a little tune in my head it might not be a very complicated one it's not going to be a, a massive hit or a you know go down as a great work of music that's not why I'm writing it I'm writing it down because I, li I like the tune that's in my head I would like to be able to play it on the piano and I'm doing it in the best way that I can, uh, uh, um, you know, and hopefully it's something that I'll enjoy and that you'll enjoy as well. But uh, isn't it terrible the way you just keep giving yourself a hard time? Why have you got to live up to some invisible standard up there? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. 
<laughs> so yeah I had to give myself a bit of talking to there and um, as usual they you know the audio quality of my recordings it isn't uh, that isn't top quality either but you know I, I don't I don't mind I'm an amateur <laughs> and uh, you know uh, hopefully you can just see through the little little blips and blemishes that that sometimes appear in the music so relax now and let's just have some nice slow summer days Okay, well, that's me for today. So thank you if you've watched all the way through to this point and um, I will see you again soon. So take good care of yourself and hope you can keep nice and busy, but not too busy. Enjoy some nice slow days as well as the busy ones. And I'll be back again very soon. Okay then, bye.